In this video, we'll be using WordFence to completely secure your WordPress website step by step. Let me show you what we'll be covering in this tutorial. I'll show you how to configure all the options in WordFence, how to force strong passwords for all users, how to set up two-factor authentication, how to use reCAPTCHA to prevent bot logins. We will configure brute force protection for your website and we will make sure you won't get spammed with email alerts from WordFence. Let's dive in right now. Log into your WordPress dashboard. From here, we go to Plugins. We press Add New Plugin. We're gonna search for the plugin WordFence over there. And we're looking for this one by WordFence. Press Install Now. And we press Activate. The first thing we need to do is get a WordFence license. It's completely free, but we still have to register with WordFence. Click on this button, and then we are at the WordFence website. Click on this button, get a free license. Then we press I'm OK, waiting 30 days. Fill in your email address, and then choose if you would like to receive these emails. I would say no, because they're not that interesting. Agree to the terms and press register. And we have received an email from WordFence with our license. Over here is the license key, but you can also click install my license automatically. When you click on the button, you will go over here back to your website. Your email address has been filled in and also the license key. Press install license. Well done. Now we click on go to dashboard Then press on this cross icon over here. I will teach you everything about WordFence in this tutorial. Don't worry, we'll be walking through all these settings over here and I'll explain everything, how it works and what you need to know. So the very first thing we do is we scroll up to here and then we're gonna click on dismiss because we're gonna configure this later on. And then WordFence asks, do you want to stay it up to date automatically? If you don't update your website regularly, I really urge you to press yes, enable auto updates. This way the plugin will stay safe and you won't get hacked. So press on yes, enable auto updates. Let's walk through all these options step by step. The first thing we do is we go over here to the firewall. Let's press this cross icon over there. WordFence has a learning mode where it distinguishes real visitors from hackers and bots, but it also learns from your plugins and how your plugins are connected to the outside world. For example, if you have a web shop, you might be connected to different things like your accountancy and all these things will be pass through the firewall without any problems. So this learning mode is only active for just one week. Now, if you run into problems in the future, you can always enable the learning mode again so that it can learn again from maybe new settings or maybe new plugins or whatever. If we scroll down, you can see all a bunch of real important information. The most important thing on this page is the blocking over here. If you are locked out of someone who needs to visit your website, his IP address will show up over here. And then you can unblock an IP address or make it, for example, permanent. Let's go back to firewall. Let's configure all the firewall options over here. And if you scroll down, we can change all the options one by one. The first thing we need to do is change the protection level from basic WordPress protection to a optimized version. So click on optimize the WordPress firewall. And then WordFence has presented the best HD access option for our website. Don't change this, just press on download HD access. Now it's been downloaded to our computer. And then we click on continue. Nice work. The firewall has been optimized. Press close. Now the firewall loads before WordPress. Really great. And now let's configure all the firewall options. Click on advanced firewall options. The first option is delay IP and country blocking. You should not enable this option and it is not recommended by WordFence itself. Allow listed IP address that bypass all rules. Well, you can add your own home IP address right there. If you fill into Google, what's my IP, then this is your IP address. So we're gonna copy this one and we're gonna place it inside of here. Paste it in over there. And in your IP address over here, make sure that you won't be locked out from your own website. However, in time, your IP address might change a bit. That's no problem at all if you're not a hacker or a spammer or a bot. Here we have different allowed listed services that are basically always allowed. Now, all these rules are very important. Just keep them on because they protect your website. Let's go to brute force protection over here. 
This is one of the powerful features of WordFence. We really need this on our website. Let's change these options as they are commonly known amongst hackers. Log out after how many logins? Well, it's on 20. I think that's a bit much. So we will scroll up and go with four. If you have four login failures, you will be locked out from your website. Lock out of how many forget password attempts? 20, that's a bit much. Let's go up to three times. Amount of time a user is locked out. And you can change this to for, let's say, one entire day. Now that will teach them a lesson. You can also use this feature, immediately lock out invalid usernames. Because most bots are just trying out usernames that don't exist. Admin and some common names. But if you have a lot of subscribers or a lot of editors or admins, they might forget their name if they spell it wrong and then they immediately be locked out. So if you're the only one, this is perfect, keep this on. If you have a lot of people working on your website, just turn it off. But you can also add a username by yourself. The most common username to try to log in is admin because it's the standard installation username. If you're the only user on your website, and your username is admin, you should really change it. How? Add in a new administrator user, but use a different email address so that you can register and log in using that user. Make sure to add this one, allow a grace period. And then we press add new user. Log in with your new user, delete your admin user, and then we can continue this tutorial. Make sure to actually do this because it's very important to be not hacked. Then we're gonna change this one, prevent the use of password leaked, change it for admins only to all users with published post capability. Way more safer this way. Enforce strong passwords. Over here we can change all members use strong password of all admins and publishers. Basically admins and publishers are the most important to have strong password. If you don't know anything about publishers, admins, editors, authors, subscribers, then please watch my tutorial over here, which I explain every role and capability within WordPress. You will learn a bunch of new stuff. If you're just the only one on your website, you can just leave it as it is on force admins and publishers. These are all good, just keep them on. We also need to enable this one. It's a bit safer. On very rare cases, some services won't work anymore using this option. Most of the time, this is great, just keep it on. Then you can show a custom text shown on blocked pages. Of course, we're gonna change this to You bad man! This is all good, check the password strength and participate in real-time WordFriend security network. All right, let's go to the next one, rate limiting. Scroll down a bit. For normal websites, these settings are all good, so don't change it. Let's go to the last one over here. Allow listed URLs are very useful if you have certain services or plugins or systems that try to connect to your website and they don't work anymore after installing WordFence. In rare cases this happens, but now you know where you can find it. Now, as for all this, don't forget to press on this button over here, save changes. Here we go. As you know on your dashboard, all things look very great. However, you won't see 100% over here because then you have to buy the pro version of WordFence. But for the most simple websites, this is not necessary. All right, then we go over here, we go to scan and you can close it. The WordFence scan is one of the best scans around and it will actually check your website for malware, uh, injections, scripts that are not supposed to be there. It's really great to have this on your website. If you ever want to run a manual scan, just press over here, start new scan like this. And then WordFence will start scanning your entire website. It then will go through all the scans step by step to see if there's any malware right now on your website. If you see more results than we have over here, then follow this tutorial and I'll show you exactly how to clean a hacked website. Really important, go watch it right now. If all's good, you will see this but there's something wrong on my website. If you click on it, you can read more about it. On my website, I have a WP Auto login file, which has been generated by my hosting company just yet when I try to log into my system. This will be removed automatically in approximately 15 minutes, but right now I'm going to delete the file and now it is fixed. Press close. Everything's okay, so that's just the way it should be. Then we go on the left side to tools, right there. Press the cross over here. And these are just some tools from WordFence, which are really nice to explore. On the live traffic tab, you can see everything that's going on on your website. In this case, I have some human logins. Those are my personal logins. 
and you can see the host name and you can actually click on this and you can see what's going on in your website. Now this is actually very useful because in this tutorial I'll show you how I came across a compromised user who was able to log in and inject the website with malicious files. Then we go to Wiz, here you can find up a domain name or IP address and you will see who this guy is. For example, let's check out my IP addresses I use, look up IP, here we go, WordFence is working. It's not my real IP address, it's a VPN. Because I always work with VPNs, it is safer and it's more anonymous. On the import export options, you can actually export all these options and import them again. When you're deploying a lot of sites, this can be useful. And on diagnostics, you can actually open up all these things to see if everything's all right. But remember, if there is an issue, you will see this warning sign over here. It's red warning sign. And then you can see what's going on. As this is not really required, I've only seen in my 20 years of website building that this is only once caused an issue with some clients. All right, after this, we go on the left side, we go to login security over here. Now, this is really important. On the login security, we're going to set up two-factor authentication. This is really important. And we also go to settings where there are some really more important things to fix. How do you do this? Well, the first thing you need to do is edit your own user. Make sure this is you. And then you go to scan this code with your authenticator app. You can use any authenticator app that you like on your mobile device. For this example, we're using Google Authenticator. And what you need to do is to press on this plus icon over there on your mobile phone. Then you have the option to scan a QR code over there. Now you point your device at your website to scan this QR code. Now you will see this new numbers over there which say WordFence and then the name of your website. This code will change every 30 seconds so it's really safe. Fill in the code right there and press activate. Make sure to download those recovery codes because it might happen that your phone falls into a toilet and you don't have a recent backup or something. So make sure to download them over here, press download. And then we have also the recovery codes. Well done. Now the next time you will log into your WordPress dashboard, you will see this, the WordFriends to factor authentication code. Get in to your app, get your code, fill it in. And that's the only way you can log in right now. First, we press on settings over here because we need to change some very important things. If we scroll down, we can now change the different roles for two-factor authentication. If you don't have any other people working on your website, all these things could be just the same. But if you do have different people like editors or authors, make sure to make it required for the editor and also for the author because it's very important that they use two-factor authentication so your website will be safe. If you scroll down a bit, this one is optional. Allow remembering device for 30 days. Can be useful if you're just sick and tired of filling out every single day your two-factor authentication. Then you can allow this. The more safer, of course, is to disable this option. This option is really important, require two-factor authentication. If you use some apps like the WordPress apps to create posts on the go or the Jetpack plugin, you need to press on skipped. However, the XML RPC option is more of a curse these years than it's a blessing. So if you don't use this, make sure to put this on required and make really sure to disable the authentication completely. Because this is the most used ways to hack websites automatically and you actually don't need it if you don't use the hideous Jetpack plugin or the WordPress app itself. If you have WooCommerce, you can integrate WordFence with WooCommerce. If you're selling jewelry or credit cards, this might be useful. If not, then you might consider keeping it disabled because customers on your website are not able to do anything on your website except buying stuff. For normal users, don't enable this because we don't need a short code. And this is all great. Then we can add another layer to our login page, which is called reCAPTCHA. Enable this one. Then we click on Google reCAPTCHA version 3 service. Then you click on version 3 admin console. You might need to log in to Google, but then we can register a new website. Put in the label so you can recognize your website. In this case, wpressdoc.com. And I want the reCAPTCHA version 3, all right, scroll down, add your domain name exactly as it is, like wpressdoc.com. Don't use HTTPS or www. You're the owner, we're gonna accept it, and then we're gonna press submit. Then we have the site key, just copy it, and put it in over there. Also with the secret key, copy it, 
and put it in over there. All right, well done. If you bump into problems with your recapture service and you're not being allowed to log in, then you might change this feature to go over here and make it more easy on humans. So make it 0 0.6 or 0 0.8. That will solve any problems you have with recapture. Then in the last option, allow list your own IP address to bypass two-factor authentication and recapture. If you have a stable internet connection like a fiber and it won't change a lot, you can add in your own IP address so you will never ask to two-factor authentication only if someone tries to log in from another location. This can be useful if you're a bit lazy, just pasting your own IP address over there. And then we press save over here to make all things saved. And last but not least, let's configure all options. Click on over there. We're gonna walk through all these options so you know exactly what's going on in your website and configure some things. Let's start with the license, which is all great. Just keep it like this. And we go to view customization. If you want to have a short code to the blocking menu items and the live traffic items over here, and you will see the blocking is added over there and live traffic over here. If you want to see that, really nice. If not, just disable this one. Let's go to general options. These settings are all good. And then you have the hide WordPress version. We generally recommend that you do not enable this anymore. Huh? Then why is this option even here? Disable code execution for uploads directory. Enable this one, because if someone is able to put in PHP files into your WP content slash uploads, with this feature, they're not allowed to execute them. So this way, you are way safer. All these things are good. Let's go to the next one. Dashboard notification options over here. Updates needed, scan data really great. Now we go to really important one, email alert preferences. Then we have to change these settings because trust me, you don't want all these emails every single day. Alert me when an IP address is blocked. You don't want this because this happens the entire day. Disable this one. Alert someone's locked out. Disable this one. Also disable this one. You should enable this one because someone with administrator access signs in, that could happen every single day. I mean, who cares? But if they're signs in from a new device, now that should be interesting. You don't need to alert this one and alert me when there's a large attack increase. Yeah, this is really important one. These are the settings I recommend for the emails. However, if you really like to see everything that's going on your website, feel free to enable them all. This is your choice. We go to the activity report. I don't know if you're interested in this activity report. I usually see them and I delete them instantly because, well, it's okay. If something really bad happens, you will get an email automatically. So I don't want the email summary. I'm gonna disable it on my website. And this is the activity report widget. The widget they're talking about is this amazing big thing. If it makes you feel safe or you want to see this on your dashboard, just keep it there. I think it's hideous, so I'm gonna delete it. Well, if we now go to the firewall options, you will see that all these things are just the options we've already covered in this tutorial. So well done, we don't need to change anything on these options. When we scroll down, we go to blocking options. If you want this, you can upgrade to WordFence Premium to do this. However, in most cases, you don't need it. And then we go over to the scan options, really interesting. We have scan scheduling. Of course, we want to enable this and let WordFence choose when to scan my website. A quick scan runs every day and a full scan runs every 72 hours. So that's really great. Here you can choose to limit your scan or use the standard scan, high sensitivity or custom. Let's go to general options over here. And here we're gonna enable to scan the theme files, very important, and also scan plugin files because we've seen recently that malicious attacks also focus on themes and plugin files. And then we have a powerful feature, scan files outside your WordPress installation. Enable this one, but there's something to really keep in mind here. If your scan takes too long that you cannot finish it, and I mean too long as in two hours, then it might get into an infinite loop because it's following certain links placed there by your hosting company that are not supposed to be followed using scan software. So make sure if you have troubles, disable this one again, but most of the time keep this enabled. Really powerful, really good. Then we have images, binary and other files. Well, you can scan them. In most cases, it's not necessary. But if you have an infection, it's just not going away. Enable this one and it might solve your problem. Let's go to performance options. If you run into a problem from your cheap hosting, you can use, use low resource scanning. 
The scan duration will take a long time, especially if we have scan files outside also enabled. But just see how it goes without this and if it doesn't work you can always enable this one. Let's go to the last one, advanced scan options. Here you can exclude files from a scan. That's sometimes really useful if your scan got hangs up. For example, backup files that are like 5 or 6 gigabyte, then your scan will take way too long and the backup file is not executable from outside. So that could cause you into problem and you can add them in over here. How does it work? Well, for example, if you're using updraft to backup your website, WP content slash updraft slash asterisk. This way this folder will be excluded from your scans. Could be useful. Now, these things are all good, don't change it. Once we have changed some of these checkboxes, you will notice up here that the scan has been changed to custom scan, like this one. Really great, just keep it on this. And last but not least, we have the live traffic options. Here you can change the usernames to ignore or our IP address. Everything's good. Once we have completed this, we can press save changes over there. If you have any questions or just want to say thank you, Matt, drop them down in the comments. I'll always reply. If you want to see more WordPress related videos, subscribe over there. And of course, check out this video. It's also really nice and completely safe. Completely safe.